pass your awareness down the body starting at the head and let me know if you find anything. My left leg is tingling a bit um, near my hip area. Okay. Left leg is tingling near hip. Very good. What else do you notice? Just having a hard time visually my body. Having a hard time visualizing your body? Yeah, to do the scan. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I want you to just feel. Okay. I don't even want you to see. I want you to just feel. Where do you feel sensations around your body? My heart feels heavy mm -hmm. on my left leg. Very good. I feel something pulling on my right back, too. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Okay, very good. So let's start with that left leg. And I want you to just bring all of your attention to that left leg, that tingling sensation near the hip. You're going to connect very deeply, very deeply with that energy, that sensation, very deeply. And if that area, if that tingling sensation had an emotion attached to it, what would it be? Fear. Very good. And does it feel as if this is your fear or does it feel like this fear belongs to someone else? Feels like it belongs to someone else. Very good. And so I'm going to speak directly to that feeling of fear right there in the hip. Are you male or female? Male. Very good. And do you have a name that we can address you by? Toby. Very good. Toby, how old are you? I feel 16, but there's reluctance. That's I, okay. That's perfect. Just go with whatever you're feeling, whatever you're sensing, and it's okay even if it's not fully, fully correct. So, Toby, here's what I want to do, sweetheart. I'm going to take you all the way back to that very last day in your life. I want you to allow yourself to just drift and float back to that very last day that you were alive and be there now. And I want you to tell me, Toby, what was happening on that day that caused you to lose your body? I just see a blue sky. Very good. Yeah, no you... clouds, just a blue sky. Blue sky. Very good. And as you're there, Toby, looking at that blue sky, is there anybody else there with you? No, it's just me. Mm hmm And what was this place where you are? Where are you? I'm alone in the desert. Yes. There's nothing there. It's just desert and sky. How is it that you got to the desert? Did you go there purposely? Did you get lost? Someone dumped me off of a wagon. Yes. It's a wagon, and they just dumped me off in the desert and left me. And so, Toby, I want you to go to that last moment where you take the last breath in that body, taking the last breath and allowing your soul to come up and out of the body. Tell me how it is that you died. Dehydration, exhaustion, the sun. 
I'm just laying there. I just laying there, I just collapsed in the desert. <sighs> yes. And so Toby, how long has it been that you've been with Samantha? What age was she when you found her? I see my elementary school. Mm -hmm. And what was she going through in her life at that time that attracted you to her and allowed you to attach? Lonely. Lonely, trying to find friends on the playground. Someone that wanted to play with her. I see her sitting beside by herself too in the classroom because she used to talk a lot. So her teacher moved her desk next to her desk so she wouldn't talk. So Samantha was alone. Very good. So I, I, grade. I understand. Grade. Yes, I understand that you were simply trying to make her feel less alone, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, she looked so lonely. She wanted to talk to everybody. She wasn't supposed to. She got in trouble a lot. Yes. And were you there to talk with her? Yeah, she was scared at home in her playroom. And I kept her company. I kept her company in there. It was cold room and it was dark. So Toby, uh, as you have been with her for quite a while, tell me some of the issues that you may have been causing for her. Fear, anger, and unhappiness. Sadness. Yeah, I imagine you felt those emotions when you were left in that desert, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. They left me there so hot. Yes, I'm sorry that she happened. She hates being taught. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I want to do, Toby. I want to help you today. And I've got this beautiful team of angels that's here. They're going to surround you now. I'm going to ask them to bring in some healing light and energy to help to begin to heal you, to rehydrate your body, to release that heat, that dryness that you've been feeling. To help you let go of that fear, knowing that you are safe now, no one else is going to hurt you. And as you are receiving that energy, Toby, I'm going to ask Archangel Michael to help you to see the light of source. Tell me when you see it. I see it. And so as you look into that light, Toby, Tell me who's there waiting for you today. My mom, my sister, and my dad. And what do they say to you? Hey, come on, let's go. Come on. It's almost like <laughs> I took too long. Come on, <laughs> hurry up. They're ready for <laughs> you to join them, aren't they? Well, let's go. <laughs> Are you ready yeah. to be with your family again, Toby? Go home. I want to go. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. So what <laughs> I want you to do, sweetheart, is I want you to begin to pull all of your energy out of the body, disconnecting from the left hip and anywhere else you are attached in the body, any energy centers, we're going to pull all of your energy out. Archangel Michael is right there to give you a hand and help you. 
pulling all of your energy out. Samantha, I want you to feel all of your energy returning now into that hip. I want you to feel it coming back in. Imagine it returning now. Toby, I want you to tell me when you're completely out. Oh, he's out. Very good. Toby, is there anything you'd like to say before you go? Bye, Samantha. I'm sorry. Bye, Toby. Very good. Archangel Michael is going to walk the soul back into the light, rejoining him with his family. We send you with so much love. Samantha, let's begin to heal that hip. We're going to bring in a beautiful healing frequency. What color would you like to use? Yellow. Mm -hmm. We're going to flow this beautiful yellow energy into this, into that area. I'm going to play this tuning fork. I want you to feel that frequency flowing into the hip. That energy is going to clear away any remaining density left behind by the soul. Michael is going to cut cords and connections between the two of you, sealing those off. I want you to imagine all of your energy and power and joy returning now into that hip. I'm going to strike it one more time. And this time I want you to imagine all of that fear and anger that you've been feeling didn't even belong to you. I want you to imagine that as I strike this tuning fork again, that the frequencies of happiness and love and peace and joy are returning into that space, expanding out throughout your body reinvigorating every cell Tell me how that feels. Good. It's so lighter. Wonderful. Very good. So that healing will continue as we progress into the session. So we're going to allow that healing to continue, asking the guides and angels to focus some beautiful energies there, continuing that process of releasing and clearing that heaviness. And let's bring your attention to the right back. There was a pulling sensation that you felt connecting very deeply with that energy. And do you get a sense of what that is that's pulling? What comes to mind? I just see, excuse me, I see a black color pulling. Black smoke. Black smoke. Just, just pulling on that area of black smoke. Mm -hmm. well, let's follow that black smoke. We're going to follow that black smoke through time and space, finding where that black smoke came from, finding where that black smoke originated. And be there now. Tell me what you see, what you notice. I just see a black hole. 
Mm -hmm. The black smoke led me to a black hole. Do you get a sense of what that black hole is? What its purpose is? No, but I can feel I can go down it. Mm -hmm. Let's go down into the hole. Just allow yourself to float and drift into that hole very safely. We're just exploring. Tell me what happens when you go into that hole. Where does it take you? It's a black hole and it's, it's like a slide taking me down, spinning down, down, down to darkness. And I'm, I don't know. I'm just alone. It's just mm -hmm. darkness and just me. Smoke led me to black. Yeah. Yeah. So where did this smoke and this black hole begin? Was that in this lifetime or was it in another lifetime? I see, I see the word cannabis. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Tell me more about that. I see cannabis and a black hole. Mm -hmm. So the word cannabis is being sucked up into a funnel going down to the black hole. So how is, how does cannabis take you into that black hole? How does that work? I smoke it and I go down, I go down into a black hole mm. and I, huh, there's nothing down there. What's happening to you when you smoke it and you go into that black hole? How is that affecting you? It's nothingness. It's, I'm not, I'm not doing all I can do. I'm just sitting and nothingness. Yeah. It's too, I'm relying on it too much. Mm -hmm. And too often. And it just takes me into a black hole. I'm comforted by it. I'm used to it. And I, I don't want to change. But I do want to change. I'm just used to it. So let's ask, is there a way to, because it's hard sometimes to let go of these things that comfort us. Is there a way that she can transition away from this? Is there a healthier way to use a substance to help her? What do the guides recommend? So they're showing me Tai Chi. And, um, which I had been looking into that and I need to do that to alleviate my stress and for a better outlet. And I don't know, it doesn't look like it's saying to cut cannabis completely, mm -hmm. but I need to balance a lot better and I need to find better outlets for my stress and not lean on it for that anytime I feel stressed. Well, let's just ask how the cannabis benefits you. I see a green vibrating plant and I'm getting up and going. I'm moving. I don't have pain. And it does help me see better if I'm not abusing it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad thing and it does have healing properties. As long as you're using it right and you could still balance your stress without it and not depend on it. Yes. So let's fill up that hole. We're going to fill up that hole now that you have an understanding that it is a helpful substance. It is helping you in your healing journey, but you need to find that balance and you can use other things to do it. Let's fill that hole up. What color can we place there? Green. Beautiful. I want you to imagine that beautiful green energy flowing into that black hole, and we're just going to close it up. 
And that black hole is going to transform into the most beautiful healing green, the high frequency color of the cannabis plant. And we are setting the intention that as this energy flows in, it's going to give you the ability to help you balance the use of this medicine. Feel the energy flowing in. We're going to heal that black hole. Tell me what you feel or what you notice there now. It feels good. It's bright and green. Mm -hmm. The blackness is gone. Wonderful. Very good. And so is there anything else important for you to know about using cannabis? Anything that the guides want to share with you today? I see balance in huge letters. (laughs) (laughs) It's all about balance. (laughs) I'll pass that along. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. We're going to ask the guides to help just to remind you. I'm sure they are, but maybe they'll be a little bit louder now. They can help you keep that in balance. (laughs) Wonderful. Very good. So let's check on the pelvis because yesterday you had that pain that really heavy pain in the pelvis area. I want you to tune into that area where you were feeling that sensation. And as we connect with that, I want you to tell me what was creating that pain? It was a cancer. It looks like there's three spots there. Yeah. So let's see if we can begin to understand this cancer. And what created it in the first place? I want you to allow yourself to go all the way back to that very first time, just drifting and floating back to the first time that that cancer appeared, connecting very deeply with the energy. Tell me what it was that created that cancer in the body. My daughter in the hospital. And how were you feeling emotionally when she was in the hospital? I was so stressed and scared. I was so angry at the doctors. I was happy at the good doctors, but there are so many doctors that were negligent and nurses. And I hated them. I hated them so much. I hate them. Yes. I had to fight so hard for my daughter to get good care. And they treated me like I was crazy. <laughs> they treated me like I was rational, like I was stupid. Like they knew better, but they didn't care about her and I could feel it. I knew they didn't care if she lived or died. And I made noise. I made so much noise until they listened to me and they hated me and I don't care. Yes. They hated me a lot. So let's just ask, we're going to bring in that higher guidance. Why was it that when she was in the hospital that she had all of these doctors that wouldn't listen to her? What was happening there? I made myself small. Initially, I thought that they knew more than I did because they were older or because they had the doctor title. But I learned. (laughs) It 
was a big learning experience. So you have to speak up. You have to advocate for yourself. And people are not always doing things with the right intentions. People are jaded. People become doctors for the wrong reasons sometimes. It's ego and it's money. Or some of them. Then some good doctors, you just see them and they just look like angels, the bright light around them. But a lot of doctors have been infiltrated and they're dark. And they don't like when they see my light. When I come into contact with darkness, we clash hard. Tell me about that. What is it about your light that clashes with the darkness? Man, I see my daughter's hospital room and I see the doctors that I had issues with and they have blackness. Their aura is black darkness around them. And my light, I see my light there and I'm so bright. It almost hurts your eyes. Wow. I'm so bright. Mm. And I... I try to break through their darkness with my light and they try to do the same to me. We're just clashing. That's all I see is us just running up against each other and just bouncing off of each other, the light and the dark. So tell me about the lesson that you needed to learn in this experience. Is it that you need to experience with these doctors? Use my voice and use my strength and to not be ashamed of it. They hated me for a reason. It was because they could feel my light and they didn't want to give my daughter good care. And I forced them to, and they didn't like it. And I guess I had to, now that I have cancer, I've had to advocate for myself so much. I've switched doctors. I've done the extreme because I learned if you get a bad experience the first time or you have a bad gut feeling, you got to leave. It's telling you something. I learned to trust my gut more. And so now that we understand you were feeling so much anger towards these doctors that you could feel their darkness and they could feel your light and this anger created an environment where these cancer cells could begin to fester. I want to move now ahead to where you are at this time with the different spots around the body. And let's see if those spots that you're experiencing now are connected to the same experience or are they connected to another experience? What has allowed that cancer in your body? It's all anger. It's all anger. There's something, so I, I see the tumors in my pelvis and they're lighting up red, anger. And there's one more in there and that's yellow. And I can't find what that one is, but two of them are anger. My breast tumor that I initially had was anger, huge anger. My neck is anger. My spine is also yellow. I don't know what that one means. Mm -hmm. And does it feel like any of that anger is not yours? Does it feel like that's all your anger? Does 
Do you get a sense if there's anything else attached in the body creating that anger? I want you to do a scan. And I'm going to ask the guides and angels to highlight any additional attachments, entities, energies that may be creating that anger for you. Tell me if you feel or see anything. It's mine. Okay. It's mine. I made that. And so is all of that anger connected to that experience with your daughter? Or are there any other events in this life that have caused you to feel that anger? The yellow is resentment. What is it that you resent? I resent being strong for everybody else. I resent everyone thinking they can dump their problems on me. When I try so hard to find professionals or I try hard to work on myself and find a good outlet and people just come to me and dump their burdens on me and expect me to fix them. Nobody takes responsibility for themselves or accountability. It seems like I'm the only one that sees that you can work on yourself and have a better life. And my boundaries are violated constantly. That Those are the two for resentment. My boundaries being violated. So let's focus on that for just a minute. <clears throat> what do you need to do when someone comes to you and they dump their problems on you? is the best way for you to create those boundaries so that energy doesn't affect you what do you need to know about that i just see myself becoming suffocated with it their energy just just takes over my body it just jumps into me Mm -hmm. i need to i just see myself with my hand out like saying stop fully stretched out in front of me, keeping them away. But I'm torn because I want to be there and help people, but they also need to help themselves. So let's ask that question of your guidance. How can she be there and support these people without feeling like she has to take it on herself? What does she need to do? I see meditation again and Tai Chi. I need to get those energies off of my body. I'm very heavy with energy and I need to learn how to get it off my body. Mm -hmm. I absorb it. let's, Let's tell her exactly how... First, let's tell her exactly how she needs to protect her energy when she's around others. How does she keep her energy to her and their energy stays with them? What are the steps? I need to envision a protective bubble of light around me and do that in the morning. Meditate and place that bubble around me before the day starts. I need to wake up earlier before everyone else and do that. When I'm outside, do it outside. Mm -hmm. And how does doing it outside, how does that affect her or help her? The wind and the sun. She needs to be around nature more. The birds, talk to the birds. Nature's key. Yes. The trees. And so when she's feeling that heavy energy, when she feels like she's taken it on, tell her how she can release that energy out of her field. 
she needs to move her body, go for a walk, get out in nature, don't be cooped up inside, try new things, reignite your light, find your spark again. Get outside. And so help her to understand the importance of having boundaries and especially in relation to her health. What does she need to know? When people don't respect my boundaries, it's poison for myself. And I never know if I'm right in feeling that way. So I don't say it. And I just keep the poison in. I need to be strong in my boundaries. Keep them. And say what I feel when I feel it. No more holding in. So what else is important to understand about this cancer, what does she need to know about it? I see the word bright. And I think that's referring to my light again, Mm -hmm. bright light. My light has been dimmed for so many years. Bright, bright. I need to stay bright. Yes. And when she stays in her light, And she stays bright. Can something like cancer even affect her? The cancer cancer cells are going away. I see them just Mm -hmm. disappearing. Healthy cells are being replaced. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes. Let's visualize. Let's focus on that for just a minute. I want you to see all those places on your body. I'm going to strike a very powerful tuning fork for the color pink full of love, full of healing. And I want you to feel each one of these frequencies flowing into your body, connecting with each of those cells. We're going to fill those unhealthy cells full of light. And we're going to dissolve them. Now that you have an understanding, you're just been holding on to anger. That anger allows for those cells to fester clearing that out today. No more cancer. Breathe in and allow this light to penetrate each and every cell of your body. Tell me how that feels or what you notice. Feels good. I feel a pulling on my thigh for some reason, my left top thigh above Mm -hmm. my kneecap. Okay. Let's check on that left top thigh. What is that pulling there? Blue energy. Mm -hmm. Tugging at my knee. Tell me, does it feel like that blue energy is a healing energy or does it feel like something else? It feels like something else. It doesn't feel good. It feels like it's sticky and it's stuck. Okay. It's trying to be pulled off of me. Okay. And it's stuck and it's, it's holding on very tight. Does it feel like this is a conscious energy? It has a consciousness. No. Okay. And let's just ask, what is the sticky blue energy? What is it doing to her? Why is it there? It's stuck on my bones and it's spreading on my bones. I don't know if that's a cancer in my bones, perhaps. Okay. 
Let's just ask that question. Is that sticky blue energy causing the cancer in her bones? Yes, cancer. Mm -hmm. And so who is it that put that sticky blue energy there? Was that her or was that someone else? I feel like it's people. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I feel like it's people having bad thoughts about me. Yeah. I don't know why I'm pissing so many people off. <laughs> Honestly, the, the brighter, yeah, the is. brighter that you are, the, the harder it is for some people to be around you when they have a low frequency. Yeah. It's wow. a disconnect. And so is that, is that like thought forms that people are sending that are collecting there? Is that intentional energy? What is that? It's thought form. It's a collective thought form. Okay. It's from TikTok. I do. Oh, so talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I shared, I shared my entire cancer journey on TikTok. Okay. And I showed everything and I had people watching me that weren't rooting for me. Oh, wow. So they would send negative and I, thoughts your way. Yeah. And I had a gut feeling to shut it down about two months ago and I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's where that's coming from. Wow. wow. So let's just, we're just going to use light and clear that energy. And again, I'm going to ask Michael, if there's any cords, anything hooked in that we need to unhook and release, I'm going to ask Michael to do that. What color can we use to transmute that energy? Let's do uh, orange sunset, orange. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I'm going to strike that tuning fork. I want you to just imagine that blue sticky energy just very easily dissolving under the power of this frequency, releasing from the body. Oh, they got it. Got it off. They got it off. Wonderful. Very good. Right, let's do another scan of the body. Let's just do another scan of the body and see if there's anything else at this point that comes up. Tell me what you feel. I think I'm okay. Okay. So... I'm going to ask the beautiful guides and angels just to begin to infuse your aura with light, clearing away any density on the auric field, filling in any cracks, holes, rips, tears, or fissures with light, strengthening. I know we place that diamond light around you, but we want to strengthen that auric field, keeping it nice and light and bright. And again, you can continue to do that just by placing that bubble. You don't always have to do the diamonds, but you can if you feel like you need it. All right, so let's move in with some of these questions and then we're gonna go on the ship and we're gonna do the rest of your healing work. So let's talk about the medication that she's been taking. Now I know we're doing a lot of healing today and we're going to see what happens after this session. She has these, she's taking these chemo pills that have the side effects. What can you tell her about those medications? What does she need to know today? I'm not getting anything. Mm -hmm. She's wondering if she should stop taking the medication. What would her guide say? 
stop sign. Mm -hmm. Stop. Okay. And how, how is that affecting her? How are those medications affecting her? Uh, it's breaking down her body. It's it's breaking down her body slowly. And will continue to do so. And so is there anything that she can do or that you can recommend to help her begin to reverse the negative effects of that medication? Fruits and vegetables and juice. Fruit juice. Wonderful. And with getting... Walking. What was that? Walking too. Walking. I was going to ask if getting into nature and being in the sun... Yeah. Would help. She needs the sun to beam on her. Yeah. Tell her how that helps her when the sun beams on her. The sun revitalizes your cells. You see the sun beaming on you. You see all of your cells tingling. They like it. They're vibrating. They need the sun. And you have to ignore the haze and chemicals in the air and try to get as much sun as you can. There's hazy chemicals in the sky. And you're also breathing that in when you're getting the sun. But you still need the sun. There's lots of chemicals in the air. All gray. We're all just drinking it in. And what's the best way to flush that out of the body? How do we get those chemicals and toxins out of our body? Water, carrot juice. Carrot juice will revitalize your cells. Wonderful. Very good. So she says that she had a strong urge to check her breasts for lumps weeks before her diagnosis. And she's wondering if someone was warning her. That was my grandma warning me. She passed away from breast cancer. Of my grandma. Mm. And is grandma here with us today? Yeah, she's here. What would she like I to say? I felt love in my heart. Mm. <laughs> Do you have any messages for you? Hi. <laughs> I've never, I was, I was two when she passed away. So oh, this nice. is beautiful. Tell me what you see. She, she has a big smile. She's proud of me. She says, keep going, Sammy. <laughs> keep going. You could do it. Aww. She's so full of light, too. She's so bright. Wow. She's just like a cheerleader. Just keep going. She's cheering for all of us. Wow. It's so good to see her. She's so happy. Wonderful. Now, is she one of your guides or does she just come check in on you occasionally? I feel like she's a guide. Mm. Wow. I have tingling my hands and my arms right here. Yeah. I wonder mm -hmm. if she's holding my hand. Yes, she is. Wow. <laughs> beautiful and so how how is it how's the what's the best way to connect with grandma can you connect much love all i see is where i sit for meditation 
Yeah. So it keeps going back to that. They want me to meditate. Oh, it's such a nice feeling. And so much just, comfort. Just allow all that love to flow through your body. We're going to ask grandma to help us by just sending a beautiful flush of energy with the intention of clearing out any remaining fear, any anger, any of that residual energy. We want to fill this body full of light. No room for any of those heavy emotions. Wow. She's holding my hands. I can feel it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my hands are tingling so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So why is it that that massive lump, now we, we, we have an understanding now where all of this was created, but how is it that the lump just seemed to appear overnight? How did that happen? Divine intervention. She wasn't listening. She wasn't listening. She was so angry. We had to get her attention somehow. And there it was. She injured herself from anger. Wow. I was rushing around the house cleaning, angry cleaning, and I clipped the counter too close, and I hurt myself, and I did it several times out of anger, and that's where my tumor formed overnight. Wow. It's all anger. They're showing me the tumor, and every single component of it is red vibrating anger and so just asking the guides and the angels do we understand everything that we need to understand today to help her to release all of that anger and to begin to heal her body or is there anything else that she needs to know She's good. We're good to move on. Okay. Wonderful. So she's wondering, why hasn't she had dreams in a long time? What stopped those dreams from coming in? I see myself with a sword and armor, metal. Mm -hmm. I'm just smiling in my armor and swinging my sword around. So is this something that she does when she's sleeping here? Is she a warrior of some sort? It's just the stars and the universe, and I'm on a ship going through the universe, going through all the stars. I have beautiful hair. I will tell you that. Wow. What do you look beautiful like? Beautiful flowing hair. <laughs> I look like me, but I just have a huge smile on my face. I'm just glowing and I'm on a mission. I'm going through space towards something. I knew I was, I knew I had a mission. I've yeah. always felt like I have a mission. Let's tap into that mission. And I'm, I'm just going through space. What is the mission? What is that big mission that you feel? I see children. I see children running around me. Who are those children? Children that need help underground. There's so many of them. I'm just, yeah. I'm just smiling. I'm not doing anything. I'm mm -hmm. just smiling. I have my sword and I have a bunch of little children around me. 
they're hugging me and they're all just wanting to be close to me. They're all at my, at my legs. Tell me, do you get a sense if you're rescuing these children or are you just a protector? I'm rescuing them. I have my sword. I just see like a dark, like a black hole darkness mm-hmm. and I'm cutting my sword with it. I'm, I'm cutting it up with my sword. And does it feel like you do this work on your own or does it feel like you do it with a group of other souls? There's other people in the ship, but I'm by myself. I'm in I'm in the front and I'm not flying the ship or anything. I'm just on like a deck in the front. But I know that there's other beings in the back, congregating, mm-hmm. talking. There's people back there. And then I'm in the front and the children are just around me. They're not actually on the ship though. They're not on the ship. They're like holographic images of them bunch of little children around me and they're happy to see me and hugging me and I'm going through space on a ship Hmm. where are these children physically do you get a sense of that Denver airport tunnels it's all over I can't pinpoint a spot I see it lighting up all over the world, underground. So their physical bodies are underground. How is it that they're, how is it that the holograph is there? It's their, it's their souls. It's their little souls in a holographic way. But their physical bodies are underground. Hmm. They're not dead. They're still alive. So, oh no. Tell me what you see. I just see them being shuffled. It's just not good. I'm almost I think I'm just blocking it out a little bit. I'm afraid mm-hmm. to go there. That's okay. That's okay. So let's just ask what's important for you to understand about your role with these children. How are you helping them? I'm saving them. I knew it. I'm saving them. I'm helping save them. It's a whole team. But we're not going anywhere. The ship stopped. It's just floating now. It's mm-hmm. just space. I'm standing there and I don't see the children anymore. It seems like I can't get my way back to the ship with everyone else. Everyone's in a centralized location in the back. And then I'm just off to my own. Why is it that you're off to your own? Is there a reason for that? I'm gui- I'm guiding us where we go. I'm looking out at the front of the ship. So let's see if you can take us on a journey. Allow yourself to move forward and take this ship to the next location. Tell me where you go. We made it to an island. It's a green island raised up high. There's no water. It's just a raised island. The ship stopped. I'm getting off. I don't see anything. It's just greenery, landscape. I'm going somewhere, though. I know where I'm going. I feel like you're with me too, Heather. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask if I'm on the same ship. Yeah. 
you're further back though. You guys are doing something. There's a group of you that are doing something. Mm -hmm. You're planning something. You're coming up behind me. We're looking for something. There's a rock, big rock. We're looking for like a fake trap door. Tell me what happens next. Jungle trap door. We go inside. We're in tunnels underground. We're just going, going, going. There's nothing. Just like dirt walls, but it's a tunnel. It was made. We're looking all over. So there's a tunnel we're going through. It brings us back to the light. So we're coming back from underground, going back up top. Now it's greenery. We're looking for something. We can't find it. As you tap into it's your cool. inner knowing, what do you imagine we're looking for? We're looking for the kids. Mm -hmm. We're looking for children. We're looking for all the children that I just saw, the holographic version of them. But everything's empty. It's all dirt. We're back. We're just back up where we started. And the ship's right there. Mm. We're back on the ship, hovering around, looking. It doesn't seem like this island is meaningful. It looks like nothing's there. We're back in space. So tell me more about this work that we do. Are we doing this in dream state? It's like a alternate. We version. do it in dream. <laughs> We do it in dream state, but we're also doing it right now. Mm. I don't understand. Tell me more about that. How does that so feel our piece to you? Of our, our piece of our souls are doing the work right now, even while you and I are doing this. Mm -hmm. We're off doing something. We have missions. Our goal is to get to the children, but we just can't find them. They move them. I would say there's maybe about eight, eight people on the ship. Mm -hmm. And then myself, so nine total. Someone's driving us. I haven't seen, so 10. And we're on a mission. I don't know. I can't see much more. Yeah. And so is this primarily what we do? We fly around looking for these children. This is our main project right now. This is our biggest goal. So we get intel telling us where to go look. And we go look. But these beings are a step or two ahead of us. And they keep moving before we could get there. Hmm. So it's it just feels like we just got there. And they just moved everybody. So now we're back on the ship. And we're trying to guide through wherever we are. It looks like the stars. And we're trying to find them. And I see like a landscape of earth, beaches, caves, islands. It's all over. Do you get a sense of how many children were able to rescue? There was about 25 that I saw. And the holographic versions of themselves that were hugging my legs. Does it feel like those children are safe or does it feel like they're still underground? They seem happy. I think we might have saved them because they seem happy. They're hugging my legs. They're saying thank you. And they're gone. They're mm -hmm. no longer there. So it was a holographic version and they were all cheering and all crowding around me. And you guys were off doing something else. And then they were gone. So maybe it's we did save those. We were just looking for more because mm -hmm. that was about 25 of them that were happy. 
It was a good encounter with them. We sent them off for safety. Okay, we sent them off for safety. And now we're trying to find more. Wow. There's so many. It's like our job's never done, though. Yeah. So is that why I don't remember my dreams? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So let's ask that question. Is that why she's not remembering because she's doing this work? Is she not meant to remember it? Is it too much? It's the veil. It's too much to remember. Mm -hmm. It would be too much on my body with what I'm currently going through. And so what's important for us to know today about this work that we're doing? What do we need to understand? It's good work. You're making progress. Samantha needs to also focus on the physical body and healing that and creating harmony. So the work on the other side can also go forward. Wonderful. And is there anything else today that she needs to know to help her to create that harmony? No, just love. So this ship that we're currently on, is this the same ship that I do the healing work on? No, this is just a travel ship. Okay. This is we're trying to get somewhere, a destination. So I'm wondering if this ship can take us to the ship where I do the healing work. Do you get a sense of that? Yeah, I can take us. Mm -hmm. So let's do that now. We're going to ask the ship to take us to the ship where the healing takes place. I want you to tell me what happens and how that looks to you. It brought us to another massive ship. And it has a ramp that you walk up on. And we're in the ship. Mm -hmm. Very big. Looking around. Yeah. Tell me if you can describe what the ship looks like as you look around. I see... There's a button in the a main station. Uh, turn around. There's a metal bed, a long bed. There's something that looks like a TV next to it in the wall. And it's all very sterile, stainless steel. That's it. Mm. And does it feel like that bed that you're looking at is, is a healing bed or does it feel like it's used for something else? It's a healing bed. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is allow your consciousness to just simply lie upon that bed. And we're going to begin the process of finishing the healing that needs to happen on this body using this technology. We'll bring in the beautiful Pleiadian guides that are here on the ship to assist. And I'm just going to ask the bed to begin to scan your body. And we're looking for any density, any remaining density that we need to address. And as that beautiful plasma energy begins to scan your body, I want you to tell me if it draws your attention to any specific place. 
No, I just got extremely cold. Okay. And let's all just through my ask, body. Let's just ask what that feeling of cold, what is that? To refresh, to clear the body. Wonderful. And is that affecting the cells? Is that affecting everything within the body? It's making her whole body vibrate to make the cells vibrate. Wonderful. So as she lays in the bed, I'm going to ask the bed to tell us what it is that she needs for healing and especially in relation to the cancer cells. What else do we need to place in the body to complete this healing today? It says light. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to ask this beautiful healing bed to begin to activate. Activate the frequencies needed for healing. I want you to sense or imagine proper lights lighting up, infusing the body with energy. I want you to once again focus on the places where those cells, those cancer cells were located, the bones, the different spots around the body. We want you to see them being infused with the plasma light energy from the bed, this technology that has the ability to eradicate all of this low frequency energy. We're going to ask the bed to infuse the body full of light, transmuting any anger, any sadness, any pain, now that we understand where all of that energy began, we want to clear it out, bringing this body into perfect balance and alignment. Tell me what you sense or what you feel. I can feel tingling all down my body. Something's definitely happen happening. I'm laying on the bed and I feel the warmth coming up from the bottom of the bed. My whole body's tingling. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. So while you're receiving that energy, let's do a little work on the DNA. I want you just to imagine the DNA that you have right now and see if you can pull it up in your mind of what that DNA looks like. You might even imagine that you see it on that screen next to you. And as you look at that DNA, you need to tell me what it looks like to you. Does it look clear? Does it look like there are spots or possibly knotted. What do you see with the DNA? It's looking clear to me. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And we're going to ask the bed to bring in the frequencies and energies needed to activate as many dormant strands of DNA that can be activated today, connecting you even more deeply to your multidimensionality, to higher states of consciousness. I want you to see or imagine those strands coming online, activating, becoming nice and bright. Tell me what you see or what you notice. I can feel a bright light in my body and I'm tingling all over my arms. 
My body temperature is changing a lot. I'm getting extremely hot. I'm sweating. Mm -hmm. I'm getting cold. Um, a lot of changes in my body right now. Wow. You okay? My nose is sweating. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it, it, we're doing something. We're doing we're, work. So we're, I'm good. We're, they, they told me, they told me it works. So I trusted. <laughs> it, it absolutely works. Wonderful. So while they're working on the DNA, I want to activate your galactic DNA as well. You might see this DNA a little differently. It may even look like a geometric configuration, but just pulling up that galactic DNA and we're going to infuse that DNA full of light so that that connects you even more deeply to your galactic star families. You have that deeper connection. And if you're able to see that DNA, Tell me what that looks like to you. It looks like stars. Um, not the Big Dipper, but you know how the constellations look with the stars and stuff? That's kind mm -hmm. of what I see. That's what I'm seeing. Beautiful. And let's ask what star race you're connected to, or even star races. Tell me what comes through. Palladians? Yes. How do, did I say it right? Palladians? Pleiadians. Pleiadians. Yeah, you're on a yeah. Pleiadian ship right now. Ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pleiadians. Is that where I'm from? Is that, let's ask, is that where she's from? Is that her biggest soul connection? You're probably from different places, but. Okay. Yeah. I what is, what is her strongest soul origin connection? Andromedans. Andromedans. Yes. Andromedans. Yeah. Andromedans, Pleiadians. Wonderful. Any other races that she's connected to? And that's it. Okay. Wonderful. Very good. How's the body feeling? Hot. Hot. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's just ask while you're here if there's any additional detoxing that's needed. Anything else? that we need to clear today? Or do we look good? Looks good. Okay. Wonderful. And do you feel that the healing is complete with the bed? Or does it feel like it's still bringing in energy? It's still bringing in some energy. Okay. So let's just allow that to happen. Just Feel that energy flowing through, knowing that it is clearing out your body. It is raising your frequency. It is igniting your DNA, cleansing and clearing your cells, bringing your body into perfect balance, resetting your system back to a pure state of energy dissolving density, rejuvenating all of your cells. And just tell me when you feel that that healing is complete. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating so much. It's complete. <laughs> wow. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. All right. We're 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 on the home stretch. 
Let me make sure and check. I think I've gotten all the questions. Are there any final messages that the guides and angels would like to bring through today? Be light and be bright. That's all they're saying. Be light Wonderful. and be bright. Be light and bright. That's all you need. All right. Well, I would just like to thank all of the guides and angels for assisting us in this session today. I'd like to thank my Pleiadian star family for assisting us on the ship and in the healing. And I'm now going to ask the higher self and the beautiful beings that we were speaking with and working with today to begin to recede back to your time, space, dimension, and reality with much love and much thanks for the information you've shared and the healing you've provided.